anyway, yes, we, we have a lot of cool stuff. So, uh, for, for example, one of the things that I learn by collecting these, these artifacts, because I want to learn, and this education helps me with the tattoos because of the meanings that we put in it. So these are fish hooks. So these are the an example of some of the fish hooks that I was able to uh, get from Mr. Alphabet. <laughs> so a collector, his name's Joseph Alphabet, one of a world renowned collector, private one of the largest private collections of Hawaiian artifacts, and that's who I went and saw and I'm I'm trying to get as much artifacts as I can to protect it from dealers' hands because he's he's gonna be letting it go and I'm trying to get it and I talked about this last season. But these are some of the artifacts that I was able to get and these are real fish hooks from, you know, seventeen and eighteen hundreds. I want it to get fish hooks because of the fact that we all wear pendants and we all tattoo fish hooks, but I want to know what it really looked like in real life back in the day. Mm. And while collecting these fish hooks, I was able to learn a lot about it. Now, fish hooks, these fish hooks were prized possessions, not only because almost every male fished for his own family back in the day in Hawaii, but I learned that majority of the old Hawaiian fish hooks were carved out of Hawaii, um, human bone. Human bone. So I question that. Like, why does it have to be human bone? Is it stronger? Is it is it the color? And I found out, which makes a lot of sense, that the bone holds the mana, the power. Oh. So if you're a chief or a king, you have a lot of mana in your bones. Now, those of you that know Captain Cook or know the story of Captain Cook, a lot of people think that Captain Cook was eaten by the Hawaiians. Now, why would they think they, they weren't known as cannibals? New Zealand, they knew, were known as cannibals. Fiji, Papua New Guinea, their stories, you know, they, they were cannibals. And it's not because they were hungry. There's like rituals and stuff on that. But Hawaiians weren't cannibals. They weren't known to be cannibals. Maybe, maybe here and there. But, you know, they weren't known to be cannibals. So... So the reason why the story came out that they were cannibals is because when Captain Cook died, the Hawaiians gave them back like a hand and a foot. You know, it was just like chopped up. It was just a hand and a foot. And and obviously you're going to go, whoa, they ate him. You know, like why? I mean, we just stabbed. They just stabbed him. You know, they didn't like chop him up. So uh, the whole battle that happened between between Captain Cook and, and everyone um, – it, it was a lot of hustle and bustle and craziness. And basically, Captain Cook tried to kidnap one of the chiefs because uh, it's a long story. <laughs> it, it's <laughs> a long story. Virginia, I'm all like, what? But they attacked him. You know, don't do that. I mean, and, and they could have attacked Captain Cook and took over the whole ship, but they thought he was a god because there was a prophecy that a god was coming. And during that time, all of a sudden, Captain Cook rolls in with this, you know, this huge boat it's like a god, right? So they automatically were giving him gifts and just were like treating him like a god. Well, when he went for the second time and he came back, he came back to repair his ship. He got caught in a storm. Well, gods don't have broken ships. They don't get caught in storms. So when he came back, they were like, you're not a god, you know, and they, they aborted his ship and like took stuff. And when they took something, I think one of the sailors like killed one of the warriors that took it. And then there was this battle. So they took some of their sailors, took them back to shore. So Captain Cook went on shore to go get those guys back. But he's up against all these warriors. He's got to take one of the chiefs. He knew that if you take a chief, then you have power. And then he'll take a chief and say, give me back my guys. We'll give you back the, you know. So I forgot the chief's name. Kalani Opu's coming, but maybe that's not it. So, so they go, Kevin Cook comes on and he goes to get the chief. You don't even stand in the king's shadow or the chief, you know, like you don't touch a chief. So right when he went to do that, the chief's warriors and guards like killed him. They stabbed him right when they stabbed him. There was a gunfight. Uh, Captain Cook's, you know, soldiers were behind, like there was a gunfight, but they just got overtaken to the point that they look, Captain Cook was dead. I mean, they stabbed him, killed him quick. So they retreated without his body and just left right so what they did the hawaiians since captain cook is a captain he has a lot of mana in his bones they this is the story they cooked them in an emu that's an underground oven they scraped all his flesh off the bones and they kept his bones so the bones hold the mana 
So if you take the bone and you carve a fish hook out of it, then this has a lot of mana in it, and then you catch a lot of fish. So Uncle Helamano told me about that. He said you can catch a lot of fish. They would catch a lot of fish, but it had to be human bone because it would attract the fish. Now, this is spiritual, and, you know, you're talking about mana and, and energy. Most people won't believe it, but I believe it, and, and that that's the kind of culture that we're speaking about. Now, are these human bones? Mm, I don't know, but I want to find out. I want to find out. I did hear when I went and got these, the reason why I got this one is because Mr. Alphabet said that it was the oldest one he had. And I would imagine that maybe it is human bone. I'm going to have to find it out. Like it. But I am learning more and more. I'm learning more and more about uh, different material. And different cultures would make fish hooks differently. You know, in Tahiti, they had the abalone shell. And they used a lot of shell instead of bone. Um, and they're all different. But, again, you guys get to see. And this bone is really different than this one. So I don't know... Like you have this one and the coloration, you could see it. And then you have this one and this is more yellowish and. Oh, see, now you're thinking. Now you're thinking. Up until a couple weeks ago, three yeah. weeks ago, a month ago, yeah, well, that they actually fish with those. That's what you were saying. Yeah. So, so I that, no that's another like, thing. We all wear pendants. Yeah. I actually have one right now. Like. Uh, this is whalebone, like ancient. I think he said like over 300 years old or something. Uh, but this this was actually given to me by a client, a chief, a chief from New Zealand, a Maori, Maori chief that his family actually came from, was one of the seven tribes that came from New um, that landed in New Zealand, which was just mind blowing. I, I was sitting there listening to his stories because he has his he has family heirlooms and artifacts that's in the museum in New Zealand. I mean, that's his lineage is one of the, those uh, chiefs back in the day. And, you know, here's here's a fun fact. So he said he said one of his stories was back in the day, the chiefs weren't necessarily chiefs in New Zealand, like the kings and the chiefs. They were they were. But basically, they were the captains of the ship. So when when a captain came with, you know, 200 on a, on a canoe or something, he's the captain of the ship. He became the chief that settled on New Zealand so that's an idea so that's why there's a lot of fighting because if you have seven tribes and there's one king of New Zealand who yeah. like it goes way back anyways what I learned is these pendants shouldn't be ever bought uh, or they could be bought but you should always be given as a gift it should be given it should be very meaningful it has more mana that way and and it's uh, passed down. So what they would do, the fishermen would do back in the day in Hawaii was uh, the fishermen would carve their own fish hooks. So it was very delicate. It's very it's very hard to carve something like this, right? Out of yeah. bone. Yeah, it's it's you have to be a you have to have a lot of skill. And if you look at the point, it's pretty sharp. I mean, I don't even know. They don't have power tools. Probably rock, yeah, probably rocks, and you know they were like skilled for sure. And uh, different hooks would catch different fish. You could see, you could see the the different shape of the hook. And why why they would do this with the with the twi the rope? They they knew like physics, right? Where they knew that this can hold more weight without breaking. If you split the hook in half here. And wrap it with a with a rope. I, I don't I don't understand this, but they said that you know it, it would hold more weight and it wouldn't snap if you do that. Huh. Like they knew a lot of things. Something like this wouldn't hold it; it would just break. It's That's crazy. Cool. So, even though they were ancients and you know indigenous people, they 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 had their own technology, they had their own thoughts. But, anyways, if a fisherman carved a fish hook out of let's say human bone. First off, they would hide the bones in caves. You guys heard of this. They would hide the chief's bones in caves or bury it in sacred, secret places because the bones would be dug up for the mana. That's why it's secret. Don't touch it. Don't 
you know, and that's why I think there was controversy with Bishop Museum and other places where they would find bones and put it on display. And that's right. like a sacred thing. You don't you leave it where it was put. You don't touch it um, because of the mana and, and the people, you know, and they would say that the mana would be buried in the ground to hold mana in the ground, in the nature and, you know, planting and just giving it back to that. But also if a fisherman would make a, a fish hook with human or bone you know and would catch fish and everything and then he passes away it would be passed on to his family his son or something and then he could wear it and let's say let's say this fish hook was was carved out of a um a human bone when you wear it you're you're kind of wearing the mana of that chief or that fisherman or whoever it was and you have a piece of them with you so they're really big on that and if you just imagine that, we get tattoos of fish hooks. We get tattoos of, you know, fish and all kinds of different things. This is where it comes from. The artifacts. This is the history, the culture. 